Monster Island Secrets. I don't even like Godzilla that much. There's a secret. You guys didn't think I noticed, did ya? 150,000 subscribers! Oh my god! Thank you! I feel like I just started this secret series, and that was when we were just shooting for, what was it, 55,000? And now we're already here at episode 90 of Monster Island Buddies. And I'm really excited because this is actually one of my favorite seasons of the original Monster Island Buddies run. It was around here that I had a good idea of what I wanted to do with the channel after episode 100, and I was getting really excited about it. But at the same time, I was wrapping up all these long plot lines from the original series. And that kind of stuff is really fun for me. So I was doing like two fun things at once, and I was just having a really good time. This season is where you also start to see more effort into things like backgrounds, or at least some props to establish more of an atmosphere. And that's really a good preview of the effort that's to come. <laughs> Surprising that for such a late season, there's still a lot of firsts to point out. So let's get started with the secret. <laughs> <coughs> the secrets. <coughs> Monster Island, but <laughs> think I got these sweaters at a Kohl's or Target or one of those kind of or one of those kind of stores. And I was so happy that they kind of sort of fit the monsters. I'm pretty sure that same trip is when I got the Santa doll and sleigh and reindeer. Uh, and I think seeing that was what sparked this entire episode, to be honest. If I, if I, had, a, if I had a good sleigh earlier, I would have done this, this idea first. I've always loved the trope of... X character saves Christmas by having to fill in for Santa Claus. I can't see Screonk in this damn snow. Uh, this might be the first time Godzilla's using Screonk as a curse word. If it's not, it's one of the early times. I just, I don't know what else to say. I just really, I love this episode. Um, I think there was a good pacing of jokes and just a fun vibe. Oh, look, milk and cookies. Hooray for Hollywood's another really fun episode. Uh, so I remember at the time, if I ever killed a character or made a character disappear for whatever reason, I always did it with an out built into it in the back of my head in case for whatever reason I had to undo it to, to just backtrack and fix something in the story. So Barragon's out was from day one going to be that he was just acting, <laughs> that he, he faked his death. To, just for no other reason than to show that he's a good actor. We're going to Hollywood! Yeah! That's a picture I took a while back. Oh, Hooray for Hollywood was one of the most fun episodes that I had making. Because I got to do it in this old Looney Tunes style of just kind of sending up on Hollywood and rapid-firing parodies. Ah, so the first parody is going to be... Um, Right here, when The Force Awakens first hit theaters. Watching this now, I could just see all the excitement and hope I still had for the new trilogy in this video. What are you doing here? You're fucking me up! Sorry! Sorry! New Hope was better! The fuck did you say to me? Nothing! Gotta go! Next up, we have a Back to the Future satire. And it's strange to have a Doc Brown toy on the same screen as Rodan, since their voices wound up being so similar. Oh, these are a ton of Toy Story toys from... Burger King, McDonald's, one of those fast food places had these toys out when the first movie was in theaters. And I saw Toy Story in a theater with my family, and we loved it so much that collecting these toys after it kind of became like a little family thing. I'm glad I, ha I'm glad I kept them all. We got a couple of Ultraman monsters for the first time ever. That only took 91 episodes. And I think this is the first appearance of the YMSF Ibra? Oh, and Manda's in the back on the crew, too. I forgot about that. How is this possible? Didn't the Cloverfield monster kill you? Acting! And this is a tribute to a, a John Lovitz bit from Saturday Night Live, where he would shout, Acting! But we buried your body! Acting! An astute commenter pointed out that burying Baragon would make it very easy for him to just burrow away to Hollywood if he wanted to. So there you go. There's my out. And Jet, 
You could fly and change sizes. That makes no sense. I could change sizes? <laughs> this is where I, belong, I don't think Jet has changed sizes in the show at this point, unless you count, you know, seeing him in his smaller baby form in flashbacks. But we actually haven't seen that he can alter between the two sizes. And I remember I couldn't resist the joke that even Jet didn't know he could do that until this point. Things feel like they're kind of wrapping up. This guy! Yeah, this is the first appearance of Andy on the whole channel. I think this is after he was rescued and he got, like, his first fur cut. That's my boy, who's your good boy? Hey, Megalon. Why are you always in a depression? All right. I guess I'll tell you the story. I have the teeniest, tiniest regret with this bit. Uh, not so much a regret, but if I were to reapproach it, I would do it in a way to make it clear that Oh, Megalon's depression is just a part of him and not something that happened because of an event. Because that's that's closer to how depression works, and I, I don't want to set out this false signal that it's just the state of mind he put himself in. But all that aside, uh, I, I really liked doing this French film uh, parody here, and um, I'm not really in France here. They're just in front of a computer monitor that has a picture of the Eiffel Tower I took on it. So les mots qui vont très bien ensemble. What the dinosaur said there, really poorly, <laughs> was the lyrics from the Beatles song, Michel. Baguette! Baguette! And him yelling baguette is just me ripping off Flight of the Concords. When I shot this, I had no intention of bringing this French character back ever, let alone actually bringing the toy to France, as I would do in the future. Life is crazy. So since we just straight out said everything's starting to wrap up, one thing I wanted to do with that was kind of bring a lot of things back to the beginning of the show so we can give it a nice bookend. And that means let's get back to the very first story ever with Rodan and Mothra. For this romantic dinner, Rodan and Mothra are having pizza and orange juice, which is one of the most nasty combos I was thinking of at the time. Here's your check. Would that be cash or credit? This might be Manda's first speaking part. And he's not, and he's got his voice, but he's not doing his catchphrase yet. Now, we're calling back to the second episode of Monster Island Buddies ever, Monster Hoarders, where Rodan is a hoarder. And in this horde, we got some cool stuff. We can see the keys from Lock and Key. If you look in the back of the upper left corner there, you can see the Tiki statue that Jet met in Hawaii. How he wound up there, I don't know. Oh, and also when Rodan bursts out of his horde, the headless body of Earl is somehow there too. How he got there, I don't know. I might have brought this up before, but my brother and I have a long-running joke where we like to come up with ridiculous names for strip clubs, and one of them that we always land on is Boobies, Boobies, Boobies. Well, after here, we could either go to the Skintastic Dungeon, Boobies, 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 or Caesar's Palace. And what's wrong with you, Gamera? Keep having these nightmares. Oh yeah, I remember this. Uh, I'd asked my brother for some lines from Gamera, and for whatever reason, he sent them to me like he always does, but for whatever reason, the quality wasn't good. And I was in such a rush to get this episode out that I just said fuck it, and had no pride in improving that. Don't be like that. Have pride. Ah, it's always so fun to do scenes at Caesar's Palace. My cameras never liked it, though. The lighting always screwed with the lenses, and, uh... I might have got some dead pixels on some older cams learning that the hard way. Hey Jet, isn't that your ex-wife? Here's a callback to, what is it, episode 8? When he has a lightning fast marriage to Hidora? Please welcome to the stage, this weird mosquito looking thing. She. Hey Rodan, isn't that your ex-girlfriend? I think this is the second time I ever acknowledged this relationship, the first time being in a mailbag question. Titanosaurus humping ham from Toy Story. Oh, there's Indy again. What a good boy. Look at him getting his money. Relax, Jet. I was here. It was a really good foursome. Hello. Foursome? Who was the fourth? It ain't a party at Seesaw's Palace till everyone's got chlamydia. <laughs> so, so I remember sending Rod the lines and he said chlamydia like chlamydia. And I thought that was a really funny way to have King Caesar say it, so I didn't change it. And honestly, I don't know if he said it funny like that on purpose or not. I like to think he did. You only made out a little bit. I didn't want to end the series without Rodan and Godzilla making out at least once. Come on. 
god. And then we call back to the very, very first episode, but we swap out the monsters. And how many times have I called back to this first card game? But a lot of the dialogue here is even the same. Look at how Gigan's hand is just cards from all these different sets. We got one from Cards Against Humanity, one from Uno, one from that Godzilla Smash game. Okay, so... Every once in a while, I do an April Fool's joke, where as time goes on, I'm not sure people understand what parts are the jokes anymore. Uh, League Night is entirely a joke. Because around this point in the show's history, it's been on long enough now, where you got the purists, who inevitably will be like, oh, you know, it was better in the beginning. And I get, I get that way with properties, too. And, you know, it, it's better in the beginning, not because of a decline in quality, but because in the beginning it's new and fresh. So similar to what I did with the April Fool's video, All Secrets Revealed, what I wanted to do here was keep setting up really big plot moments and then interrupting them with nonsense. So yeah, this comment from Mr. McBooger Bear is 100% fabricated. I made it up in Photoshop. There's no Mr. McBooger Bear. This comment isn't real. Uh, I was never butthurt about this comment or comments like it. But instead, I befriended you guys and fell in love with Mothra. Then I started dating her, and you guys out it. Here's King Ghidorah summing up the entire series just randomly. And I like these moments where Godzilla 2014 still has a little Manila in him. King Ghidorah, but I was killed again. I think I was winging this. I think I went by memory. Ah uh, yes, a vodka seltzer. I think that was just I think that was just a regular water. I think the house was dry when I filmed this. The Motus! Oh no! Motus! Look! That one's about to say something! Uh, hey, we got a couple of Mutos, and I know they've been on the show physically by this point. They just haven't said anything yet. And again, this is an April Fool's video, so I'm just doing what I do and teasing all the things you want to see, but interrupting them with things you don't want to see. Oh, these shot glasses sucked because they didn't stand up right. But this whole thing was an excuse for me to try to make a season one episode and try to, like, talk like the characters used to talk and make them just feel like they used to feel, just to see if it was possible. So I thought right here that this would be the giveaway that this was an April Fool's joke because uh, here's another manufactured comment I made, and it's from the Monster Island frog with a picture of the frog. And uh, as you know, I try to get that frog into every single April Fool's video somewhere. So, uh, yeah, that's the joke. The whole thing was a joke. And it's cute, because to this day, I still get people who pop in as defenders and be like, I don't know who left that comment. The show's always been whatever. Or, yeah, the show's changed, but I like this and don't like that. And it's just, the whole thing was a joke, guys. The whole episode was just an April Fool's joke. And now, continuing our wrapping up of everything and getting back to the first seasons, uh, the Battle of the Bands is finally gonna happen. Hooray! There are so many people. Hey, man. Pass the Dutch upon the left hand side, man. I'm pretty sure that was recycled King Caesar audio. Uh, I think it was from the, um... I think it was from our previous season finale when they're smoking up together. No, you guys are Destorio monsters. It says so right there on your drum kit. Ah, yes, going back to that spelling error from years prior. Destorio monsters on the drum kit has now turned into an actual plot in an episode. See, it's fun to work around mistakes instead of just pretend they didn't happen. And look, they're even performing the same song, Monsters, from Gorosaurus' first appearance in the Monster Island Buddies. Yeah, I remember before going into this season, I rewatched the entire series and made a list of all the little loose ends I wanted to wrap up. What I liked about this episode was that Jet Godzilla and Rodan are the dick aggressors, but it doesn't... It doesn't pan out this time. Gigan gets some licks in, Gorosaurus gets a good kick in, and they don't win the day. And that's the wrap-up for Gorosaurus and Gigan's plots, really. They just... They're, they've been good guys the whole way through, and now they're getting a moment. But now we go back to a reference from the very, very first episode, where Godzilla's got a peanut allergy, which he conveniently forgot about when he got stoned and ate this here peanut butter. Okay, so I think this is the first appearance of the Gabra Ibera duo doing the little no shtick. And here's a fun fact. Most of the time I do the no with Ibera, I'm actually using the same sound file. So I only really said it like once. Ever. <laughs> 
I think there's exceptions, though, but I'm pretty sure most of them are the same sound clip. Amazing how many firsts are still happening in episode 94. Look, I didn't want to end the series without doing a clip show episode. I felt like a clip show episode just has to exist in every long-running show ever. But I found out that's a lot easier said than done. It's not super easy to organically work in flashbacks. And which flashbacks do you even use? So for clarification, uh, Godzilla doesn't truly die here. He just has a very near-death experience. So he's got a foot in the grave. He's still alive on life support in the real world, but his mind has traveled to the afterlife. I should copy and paste clips from my old Secrets videos and run them over these clip show bits so you have to hear the same secrets again. What memory of Godzilla springs to your mind? Um... You know what, baby? A couple of people interpreted this that Mothra still has some kind of hidden feelings for Godzilla, but that's not the case at all. As established several times in the series, Godzilla is just really, really good in the sack. And... And he's just memorable. His his performance leaves an impression on you. That's all there is. The only downer was how he made me sit through about 20 Godzilla movies afterwards. And as it turns out, a lot of those early films recycle footage. They show the same old clips over and over and over again. Yeah, there's another fourth wall break. Uh, I, I'm... <laughs> I think the setup's good. I'm not proud of this payoff with them all just looking straight at the audience. And when he takes over, it'll be a total apocalypse. Wait, what's this about on alpaca's lips? I think I was originally going to do something with that line, similar to what I did with the space-time paradox and space-time paradox, and the ducks turned out to be real characters. I think there was a point in time I was going to have an alpaca's lips come and bring the end of the world or something like that. Clip show formats also let you tie a lot of the exposition together. Like here, we get to kind of retrace Gojira's steps since the early seasons, and we confirm that it was his voice on the speaker in season two, and we confirm that he's Cthulhu's slave, and the reason he was trying to do all those evil plots at the beginning was to escape that and escape Cthulhu taking over the world. Gojira's actions since the beginning have been both in service of Cthulhu and trying to create a space-time paradox to avoid a hell coming to Earth. Yeah, I planned that from the beginning. No, I, I really did not. It just kind of fell into place this way. Where did you get that video camera anyway? I just found it one day. That's so funny, because I used to have a video recorder, and I lost it. <laughs> I actually have no recollection of making that joke that the video camera used to belong to Gamera. I wonder if that was setting something up. I really don't remember doing that. So, yeah, this is also the beginning of the end for this Godzilla figure. As you can see, there's still some peanut butter crap in his mouth, and I did purposely leave a little bit for this episode, but what wound up happening was a lot of the white in his teeth uh, vanished too, and his mouth just looked weird, and you'll see that in the next few episodes. But it got to the point when I just couldn't stand it with this Godzilla toy anymore, and I swapped him out. Mecha Godzilla is now doing a bad Christopher Walken impression. So this was a little opportunity to do a nice retcon, because if you recall in an earlier mailbag, Mecha Godzilla had three functions, and one was doing a bad Bill Cosby impersonation. But unfortunately, it turns out that Bill Cosby is a human piece of garbage and a monster. So. We had to retcon that and change it into a bad Christopher Walken impression. Two kaiju fall into some cream. One gives up and drowns. The other, he struggles so hard, he churns that cream into butter. Now, Rodan, which kaiju are you? This is from Catch Me If You Can. I love that movie. It's a good movie. And now, after all these years, 96 episodes, Rodan marries Mothra. And if you wanted to, if the entire Cthulhu plot wasn't your cup of tea, you could make this your last episode of Monster Island Buddies, and it'll work. And that's the, that's designed on purpose. This was sort of a, an exit point if you wanted to jump off before things got really weird and uh, just tie up all the Ghidorah Monster Island War stuff. Spare a moment to imagine a grown man laying on his belly in his hallway, marrying two of his action figures in front of all of his other figures. 
So Barragon's speech here is also a little meta. It's kind of speaking to the audience about how the show itself has changed. And so much has changed since then. Our appearances. You'll see it right here. He said our appearances, and then it shows characters who have changed their appearances throughout the show. Then he says our loyalties, and we show a couple of uh, monsters who have switched sides a couple times. Some of us, it seems, never got much of a spotlight. There's some bullshit right here. Oh, me! And screw this! I'm going back to my home planet. I've had it with Earth. Hey, uh, come back here! I think that's it for Death Ghidorah, right? Flies back to his home planet and we never see him again. I've written him back in, like, twice, but then those scripts have changed and he was written out again, so... He's on my mind. I haven't forgotten about him. And here's where King Ghidorah, dying, transfers his energy into Mothra to make Fire Mothra, which she still is to this day. And it explains how Fire Mothra gave birth to Dorats years later. How do you people follow this show? And we call upon the power of the almighty hand. My hands are officially canon characters on Monster Island Buddies. Grand King Ghidorah does the same oh shit that King Ghidorah did back in, like, what was it, episode 13? That was from Little Shop of Horrors when Audrey 2 blew up. Oh, shit! I know that it feels like episode 100 is, like, the end, but to me, um, from here to 100 is the end. 97, 98, 99, and 100 are just one long ending and epilogue. That's how I see it. So demons are taking over the world. And a lot of the effects are just stock videos I bought or apps that create d destruction effects. <laughs> Same apps I've been using throughout the entire series, basically. This is the last time we see King Caesar till he pops up again in episode 100. And I remember some people in the commenters asking if he died. Ah, the premiere of the Shin Godzilla figure. I had not seen Shin Godzilla the movie yet at this point, and I think I might have even been under the impression that it was a sequel to the original Godzilla, and it is the original Godzilla that is that is returning in Shin Godzilla. So by making the original Gojira turn into Shin Godzilla, I, I thought I was a little closer to Shin Godzilla than I actually was. And did I just kill Mechani Kong? Because I know he comes back in episode 101. I guess you could just say he got rebuilt. A long time ago, I think it was the season 2 finale. Uh, it was one of the first times that the show actually had somewhat of a touching moment. And it was when uh, Mecha King Ghidorah was fitted with a bomb and it was on a crash course to Monster Island. And the monsters realized there was nothing they could do and they kind of just looked up, each accepting their fate. Well, you might have not caught this, but... This scene here is the same thing, except this time they're looking down. And did I just kill off Kamakaris and Kumanga? Is that the last time we ever see or hear from them? Here it is, Godzilla. My brand new time machine. Wow! That looks just like the time-traveling phone booth from that movie, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. So I might have said this in the earlier Secrets videos. In the early days of the series, Mechagodzilla had a time machine that was essentially the phone booth from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. At that time, it became apparent from the comments section that there were a lot of people under the impression that the phone booth was actually the TARDIS, or a TARDIS, from Doctor Who. So that's why I thought it would be funny... <laughs> I thought it would be funny that when Mechagodzilla remakes his time machine, this time it looks like a TARDIS. Ah, oh, these close-ups of Godzilla's mouth reminds me of that dog mouth from Little Shop of Horrors. This could be you, Seymour. Oh look, there's a bender in the Sorry, background no, wait. of this Mecha Godzilla lab, which is basically a light blue sheet on the floor, <laughs> some wires and cables. Hey, have you seen a monster around here who kind of looks like me and not a weak and pathetic loser like you? Weak and pathetic is how the Godzilla Saurus has been referred to for like every reference for a while now. Even when Gojira told the campfire story, he referred to he referred to the character in the story as weak and pathetic. Here comes Rodan! 
Rodan sings his own theme song from a previous mailbag question. Yeah, like I said, I haven't I hadn't seen Shin Godzilla yet. I don't think I even seen trailers yet when I filmed this episode. So that's why you're not seeing this Shin Godzilla do neat things like, you know, that crazy dirty fire beam that turns into a concentrated purple beam and then and then all the beams that come out of his back and then his tail shoots a beam. I, I didn't know yet. So this is cool. So Godzilla and Jiras are at the actual moment. Gojira sells his soul to Cthulhu. And when they're trying to escape, Jiras gets left behind. So it's a good old fashioned grandfather paradox confirmed. Godzilla's wife is also his mom. Maybe there's still a way out of it. Uh, I'm, I'm not done toying with Godzilla's lineage in general, but um, as of here, as of here, that is the explanation. Uh, <laughs> now, that is not... A lot of people were like, oh, that's why um, Manila is so dumb when he's a kid because, oh, it's like an incest thing. And that's not... I'm going to be honest. I never looked at it that way. And I never... I never looked at it like, and that explains Manila being dumb. Um, I that, Like, that wasn't part of it. And also, remember something... Because of Gojira's curse, he doesn't have to have full sexual congress with Jiras. All they have to do is hump a little bit, and technically speaking, an offspring could appear. And at that point, is Jiras truly the mob? I mean, I guess. But you'll notice I didn't touch this since. Oh, this... <laughs> I'm sorry to sound like a broken record. I just love this season. It was so fun to do. Hey, stop it! Oh, look at Andy! And we can't wrap up the series without bringing these two newscasters back at least once. And oh, that's such a Bojack Horseman joke right there. So, so they have a Twitter handle, and it's pick a good Twitter handle, Chris, and don't make the handle this note. <laughs> implying that she gave him a note to pick a good Twitter handle and he made the note to Twitter handle. Ah, it's a very, very BoJack Horseman joke. Lots of little plot Easter eggs going down below in the Chiron here. Uh, oh, I did! Look at that! I did kill Kumanga and Kamakaris officially. So all four members of the Fantastic Four died and, sta and stayed dead. Wow. Oh, look at that. How adorable. Uh, look at that. Andy reference. Ibra, help me fight them. No. There's that Todd McFarlane cyborg ape that... It's a thing again now, somehow. Here he's just playing generic Cthulhu demon. Look at how when I'm having Cthulhu and Destroyer exit the screen, I'm just using Cthulhu to push Destroyer, which I've done more than once. And sometimes... Still do. So from a narrative perspective, I needed Titanosaurus to revert back to his smart personality because we've already established in the show that his smart personality knows how to do time travel where you can create new timelines instead of be stuck in a loop like Mechagodzilla's time travel. All right, the Iron Giant gets to play. Oh, he's dead already. He wasn't long for this world. Hey, Mechagodzilla, why not send this Voltron out to get him? It was too expensive. The Voltron stays right here. And that's all true. I didn't want to risk expensive. nicking that Voltron, Voltron toy because right it was expensive. Here. And here it is. It wasn't enough that I kept evoking and recreating the first episode, but now I straight up have the main cast travel back in time to the first episode to see themselves. And it was a tough effect to do because I'm at a different house now. And yeah, in this version, they go back specifically to kill themselves and just create a paradox. But, you know, uh, there was uh, there was a temptation, I remember, to also just end the show on a time loop. You know, like, obviously take the plot in a little bit of a different direction with the time travel stuff and make it that the ending of the show is the beginning of the show and you could just watch the hundred episodes on an endless loop <laughs> and it'll always work in a narrative form but i had to reject that temptation because then i would never be able to revisit this universe unless i was just filling in more blanks in the in the time loop it worked what no 
And as has been done in the past, as Rodan vanishes because of the paradox, who hear a quack. God, look at Godzilla's fucking mouth! And that's the end of that. And if you're new to the show, uh, you might not have known that this wouldn't get resolved for, I think it was like four months, four, four or five months before episode 100 would finally drop. Because uh, it was a beast of an episode to make. But as it stood, the universe had just been erased and does not exist. So for four months, the MIB universe did not exist. Episode 100 deserves its own secrets. Plus, we should cover that frisky episode, too, that's not numbered. And we'll do that at 165,000 subscribers. So yeah, if you, if you love the channel, please subscribe. If you like the channel, please subscribe. If you hate the channel, please subscribe. And we'll get closer to our goal, and we'll have done a secrets video for the first 100 episodes of Monster Island Buddies. Everything pre-Paradox. I feel like I just started these. That's nuts. Uh, thank you guys again. Thank you so much for letting me revisit this season too. This is such a fun one.